listening to the PharmaXL podcast, a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with over 100,000 downloads a month. and a fellow pharmacist. And on this show, I want to help you unlock your potential and flourish as a pharmacist. We'll cover everything in pharmacy, from ways to own your career to self-care, to insights in digital health, pharmacogenomics, and beyond. So PharmDs, stay tuned, because your journey to be inspired to own and excel in your pharmacy career starts here now. and welcome to another episode of the PharmXL podcast. In our previous discussions, we've delved into the intricacies of credentials and their impact on our quest for purpose. Today, we're embarking on a compelling exploration of another influential force in our lives. In fact, it might be the biggest influential force in our lives. Money, you've guessed it right. But before we delve into the complex interplay between money, wealth, and purpose, Let's see the stage with a profound quote by the renowned author Leo Tolstoy. Money is a new form of slavery, indistinguishable from the old simply by the fact that it is impersonal, that there is no human relation between the master and the slave. Now this quote is taken to be interpreted as saying that while money doesn't involve the direct human oppression of traditional slavery, it can still lead to a form of bondage where people are controlled by their financial needs, debts, or the pursuit of wealth. It highlights the impersonal nature of how money influences people's lives as it doesn't involve a personal relationship between those who have it and those who may be struggling due to a lack of it. Now let's dive straight into the heart of the matter, shall we? Money, that elusive pursuit that consumes so much of our time and energy. There is no denying its importance. It is the grease that keeps the machinery of our lives running. It pays our bills, keeps a roof over our heads, and provides sustenance. Yet, and here is a twist, dear FAMDs, money is not synonymous with wealth. Money is undeniably vital for survival. It's the instrument that allows us to meet our basic needs and fulfill our responsibilities. It's the currency that pays our bills, covers our loans, and maintains our lifestyles. But here is the revelation, money is not wealth. Wealth, in its truest essence, transcends the immediate exchange of currency. It's an intricate tapestry woven from finances, possessions, values, and investments that serve us not just in the present, but over time. The Oxford Dictionary, for example, defines wealth as a plentiful supply of a particular desirable thing, not just money. For the initial decade of my career, I relentlessly pursued money. Every job I took ensured I could pay the bills, the mortgage, and more. Yet here is the epiphany. It didn't make me happy. Why? Because money is a short-form elation, a transient joy that vanishes as swiftly as it arrives. Wealth, conversely, is a long-term aspiration, an enduring accumulation of value that enriches our lives over time. It's more than just money. I was chasing money, but money did not fulfill my need for happiness. It didn't just give me that joy that I wanted to feel. Let's pause for a moment to contemplate the perspective of Naval Rabikant, a prominent entrepreneur and angel investor. He famously advises, get rich slow. The underlying message, haste in the quest for rapid riches, which is what we do when we look at the riches that we accumulate from our jobs or our salary or wages week to week. This often compromises the journey towards long-term wealth and fulfillment. Eckhart Tolle, also a spiritual teacher and author, offers a poignant insight. If the primary motivation for getting money is to be self-sufficient and not dependent on other people, then when you get money, it means that you don't need to be dependent on other people. In essence, Tolle reminds us that money should serve us, not enslave us. We should strive for financial independence and security, but not at the cost of our happiness and purpose. Now, let's bridge the connection between money and purpose, particularly within the context of our professional lives. If I reflect on my career in the first few years, money definitely was ticking a box for me, although it was a short-term return. It was keeping a roof over my head, it was paying my bills, it was keeping my kids at school, doing all these things that, you know, uh, we need to live our daily lives. 
but it was not building wealth. It was not making me happy in the long run. And I definitely wasn't accumulating any uh, money in my bank because I just was looking at the short term return of how a job that I have today is paying my bills. I was not, I did not operate with a long term vision of how can I build wealth and happiness in the long run and not just immediate returns of money. If I was to give you an example, I'm not getting any direct returns from this podcast right now, but it is building wealth in the long run. And it was changing that narrative from a short term income or a short term return to a long term return that aligns with my vision and purpose for what I want to deliver in my career to other people and to society. Let me make one thing clear. I'm not advocating that we disregard the importance of money. It is an indispensable tool for our survival and well-being. But we need to balance it between uh, having money and having job satisfaction. So reflect on this perspective. Individuals will employ you and compensate you generously to manifest their dreams. Your skills, knowledge, and expertise possess tangible value. They contribute to the realization of someone else's vision, and they shouldn't just be compensated with money, which is what you do when you have a job that pays you wages or salary. True wealth should be found in building your own dreams, not in building someone else's dreams. When you build someone else's dreams, you are looking at short-term returns in the form of wages or salary. But when you build your own dreams, you are building true wealth in the long run. And it shouldn't just... um, shouldn't just mean that you're going to get direct returns in your bank account like that day or that week or that month it may take a few months of building but that is long-term wealth because you're building something that truly aligns with your vision purpose and values and it is building you wealth in the long run not just in terms of money but happiness and purpose and joy again consider the words of neval ravikant and by the way all of these quotes will be found um, in his book called how to get rich without getting lucky Play long-term games with long-term people. In the realm of wealth generation, adopting a long-term approach often leads to more substantial financial rewards in the long run. Now, let's take a step back and wonder where money ranks in your life's priorities. Does it dominate your thoughts and actions or does it harmoniously complement your pursuit of purpose? Pose this question to yourself. Do you desire money before wealth or do you yearn for wealth before money? It's a fundamental query that can shape the course of your existence. When you pursue wealth, when you concentrate on nurturing value and making a meaningful impact, money often follows as a natural consequence. And I cannot ascertain how important this statement uh, is. Don't focus on short-term investments. Focus on creating meaningful impact that truly aligns with your purpose and money will come as a result of you doing something that you're truly passionate about. Visualize this transition as a shift from the fleeting pursuit of currency to the enduring cultivation of abundance and fulfillment. Live an abundant life. As you reflect on this, remember that the choices you make today can lay the foundation for a more purposeful and prosperous tomorrow. So how then do you navigate the intricate terrain of money and purpose? How do you transform the pursuit of wealth into a meaningful journey aligned with your true self and deepest aspirations? First of all, we need to strike an equilibrium between wealth and money. Acknowledge that money is a tool and means to an end rather than the ultimate objective. It's a resource that empowers you to realize your goals, support your loved ones, and effect positive change in the world. Wealth, on the other hand, signifies a holistic and sustainable form of prosperity. It does encompass financial security, valuable positions, and a sense of fulfillment derived from meaningful contributions to society. Focus on meaningful contributions. So by recognizing this equilibrium, you can cultivate a harmonious relationship between wealth, money, and your purpose. Also consider the concept of purpose-driven wealth. This notion underscores the significance of aligning your pursuit of wealth with your unique purpose and passions. When your actions are guided by a sense of meaning and fulfillment, wealth becomes a byproduct of your purpose, as I said earlier. Imagine waking each day with a profound sense of purpose, knowing that your endeavors not only accrue monetary gain for you, but also build wealth in the form of valuable experiences and relationships and contributions to a greater good. And this is how I feel when I write online, when I create uh, podcasts, when I create content. It 
is more about money. It is more about the fact that I'm building true relationships, that I am sharing my experiences with the world. I'm helping to shape uh, the lives of others and not just my own. And that in itself is wealth. That in the long run does earn me financial gains in the uh, form of coaching and in terms of serving my patients in the form of recognition, becoming a leading industry voice. All of the things that I don't look for when I create content, but it does drive people and draw people to me naturally. And this is what I'm meaning by saying live an abundant life where you give out so much that naturally money flows in as a byproduct of you giving out so much to the world. So let's explore some strategies for generating wealth while remaining true to your purpose. I would recommend you continuously invest in your learning, uh, in your knowledge, and in building your skill set. Education is amongst the most potent tool for building wealth. To echo Warren Buffett's wisdom, the best investment you can make is in yourself. But it must be learning that, as we've discussed in earlier podcasts, aligns with your values and purpose. For example, I invested time in learning how to create a podcast. Launching this podcast aligns with my purpose of helping pharmacists excel in their careers and allows them to provide better patient care. And by the way, it doesn't have to be learning that costs you a significant amount of money or like extra credentials. I've learned so much. Um, actually, I've learned more from little online or short form uh, digital courses than I have, to be honest, in all my years of uh, studying pharmacy school. I mean, that was good foundational knowledge, but with those uh, little digital courses that I've uptaken to build my skill set and, for example, marketing, personal branding, etc., I have found a way to channel my pharmacy education and knowledge to the world. And this is how you build wealth. Also think about entrepreneurship as a means of creating wealth that aligns with your purpose. Establishing a business or a startup can enable you to pursue your passions while generating income. This doesn't need to be a huge formal undertaking. Um, I definitely started very, very, very small uh, and I'm building it as I progress. It could be as simple as turning your favorite hobby into lucrative income or launching a consulting side gig like I did which potentially becomes or became my full-time gig alongside content creation, which is also driving me some wealth. And we're going to talk about all of these things in detail in uh, other seasons of this podcast. Prioritize creating value for others, whether through your work, products, or services, endeavor to make a positive impact on people's lives. As you provide value, wealth will naturally flow in as I see it. As Deepak Chopra says, instead of asking what's in this for me in whatever pursuit you are carrying out throughout the day, whether it's sending that email, posting that post, um, in anything you give out, in any email you send, any communication, any interaction, instead of saying what's in this for me, ask how can I be of service and value to those around me? The more value you give, the more you're going to get. I swear by this from my last year or two building content and communicating my values on purpose online and just giving out as much as I can for free and helping others, you get so much more back in abundance. Formulate a sound financial plan that balances your immediate financial needs with long-term wealth building objectives. So consider seeking guidance from financial experts to ensure your financial strategy aligns with your purpose. Business advisors are really good when it comes to this, but also uh, business coaches and life coaches, they can help you uh, shape the narrative in your head with what you want for your, um, for, your, for your life, for your purpose, and align that with how you can turn that into wealth building activities. Lastly, embrace the practice of giving back. Understand that wealth is not solely for personal gain. It also serves as a tool for effective positive change in your community or causes that are really close to your heart. Let me tell you this, my biggest tip to creating wealth is one I got from the book called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra and it says the easiest way to get what you want, including material affluence, is to help others get what they want. I do recommend you read that book as it is so enlightening and it is honestly the biggest or one of the best investments that you can make in building your career from the ground up.
As I conclude this uh, thought-provoking episode, I hope it has got you thinking. Let's uh, transform some of the insights that we have discussed into some actionable steps. And as always, I'm going to try to put all of these in a PDF file that I will share the link to in the podcast description. So here is an actionable plan to help you kind of navigate the path to purposeful wealth building, let's call it. Number one, take a moment to assess your current relationship with money and wealth. Are you primarily driven by the pursuit of money, which means that you just go to work every day to get a salary or a wage because that ticks a box for you and it's a short term return? Or do you have a clear understanding of your wealth building goals and potential? We we all have potential to build wealth in one way or another. We all have skills, passion, values, expertise, knowledge, etc, etc that we can use to build wealth. So assist your relationship with money and with wealth building activities. Number two, revisit your purpose and passions. What genuinely excites you and how can you align your wealth building efforts and potential with your purpose? Number three, develop a financial strategy that prioritizes both short-term financial stability because you do need money in the short term and long-term wealth accumulation. And as I said, seek guidance from financial experts and um, business coaches to achieve that. Or you might know what you're doing already. I kind of didn't do that, but um, I figured it out as I go. And so far, uh, there are no regrets. But at some point, I think I'm going to need that help as well. Commit to continuous learning and skill development. Invest in digital courses and workshops and experiences that enhance your knowledge and value. And I offer some of these and they have been a huge hit. Not just fulfilling for me uh, in terms of communicating with the world what I'm extremely passionate about, but for others that I have delivered that value and shared uh, with as well. Focus on creating value in your professional and personal life. How can you make a meaningful impact on others while building wealth? Number six, explore opportunities to give back to your community or support causes aligned with your purpose. I give so much uh, in my community. I did a lot of volunteering work in the beginning of my career and that led to me being on boards later on um, that are not only kind of a form of income, but just make me feel like I'm contributing to something bigger than myself. Remembering that wealth isn't just for your personal gain. It's also a positive tool. It's a tool for change in your life and the lives uh, lives of others and periodically revisit your financial and wealth building goals and I said at some point in one of the earlier podcasts I take time every month to every three months depending on my calendar to just look at what I'm doing and and how it aligns with my strategy and vision for my life for fulfilling my purpose Reflect on your progress and make adjustments to ensure you remain aligned with your purpose because that's when you'll be fulfilled and that's when you'll be happy. So hopefully uh, these questions would give you a bit of an action plan uh, that you can embark on a journey towards building wealth that transcends from mere financial accumulation. So discovering that true wealth encompasses fulfillment, meaning, and a legacy that extends far beyond your financial assets. When you chase financial assets alone, you will be dissatisfied. And because you chase them so hard, they might not even turn up to you. So it's about giving more than you're getting, and this is how abundance flows in. So remember that the pursuit of wealth should not be a heedless chase for accumulation. Instead, let it be purpose-driven. Let it be a voyage where each step draws you nearer to a life enriched with abundance for you and for others. A life where you are fulfilled, but you're also creating impact for you and for those around you. I hope that you found this episode enlightening. I've invested a lot of time into thinking about what I'm going to say in this episode, but it is me purely communicating my passion for not just... um, getting money into my bank account, but it is more than that. It is about creating happiness, wealth for you and for those around you. So hope you've enjoyed it and join me in the next episode of the Farm Excel podcast as we continue exploring all the factors that can either enrich or detract us from our sense of purpose. Money can help definitely be enriching, but make sure it builds wealth, happiness and joy for you and for those around you. Until then, may your pursuit of wealth be guided by the wisdom of your heart and the clarity of your purpose. See you next time. 
you've been listening to the Farm Excel podcast. If you haven't yet, subscribe, rate, and give us a review of this podcast. Feel free to send us your questions and comments to discuss on the show. And join me next week for another amazing conversation. Thank you for listening. Thank you.